Well, imagine in the early days, every ship would have carried a sailmaker on board, sailmaker's apprentices, um, the boatswain's mates, and general crew on the boat would have always maintained their sails and sewn new ones that had supplies with them and uh, all the tools and equipment necessary. Probably until the dockyard, uh, HMS Dockyard, was being built and uh, the Royal Navy put in the facilities for a very large loft that trained a lot of the old Bermudians in, in actually all trades, but in sail, sail making in particular. People like the wind goods from Somerset, um, there was a smith in, in the back of town, uh, there was Guy Millet in St. David's, Laurie Brangman had a loft in St. David's, so any of the ports would have had small loss, but then again all the boats would have still carried their sailmakers on board. One of the keys to make a good sail is to understand how wind works around objects. To be a good sail maker, you also have to be a good sailor. You have to understand what you're making and how it works. Sails are, uh, are shaped, and in the old days with flax and cotton, they would put big broad seams and a lot of times um, vertical panels, and uh, the broad seaming would stretch to, you know, they'd have to ease the sail in, um, in light winds and throw water on it and try to get it to, to take a decent shape, and then it would usually hold that shape. Whether it was fast or not, um, you know, it wasn't really an issue, I guess, in, in, in square riggers. They just had to go downwind, and same with schooners, which could get a little bit further to windward, but still, generally, they would build them for reaching. So big baggy sails, I guess, in the, um, in the old days. But, uh, and then as it changed, where you had um, new fabrics coming in, then you had to deal with uh, modern design techniques to actually capture the proper cord depth, which is the, uh, the amount of shape in the sail, at, um, uh, to, ca you know, to have it accurate, because the new fabrics didn't stretch as much. So you could also build a very bad sail with new fabrics by not paying attention and putting shape where it's needed. And that was cut and try in the early days. And then later on, it became, um, they started analytically designing sails. There was a paper done in 77 by um, Jerry Milgram that outlined how, what best shapes, what proved fast, and that was the benchmark in the early days. And then uh, nowadays it's you know, computer designed with all the high-tech tools, they're using uh, modeling programs, uh, wind tunnels, and, uh, and the like. So nowadays, with the modern fabrics, like the carbons, the uh, Vectrans, and whatnot, there's virtually no stretch. So you have to design them pretty accurately. And uh, today's boats, where uh, you know, they can point up 25 degrees, even more, some of them into the wind where in the old days you'd be lucky to do 70 degrees. So it makes, a, it certainly come a long way um, since the beginning.
Well, when I was coming up, um, I started with Jay Hooper back when I was about 12. And uh, he was probably the first modern sailmaker in Bermuda. And he trained under Paul Elstrom um, and then moved the loft. He came to Bermuda to represent Paul in the, uh, in, in the Western Hemisphere. And he set up uh, his loft. And some of the guys that trained in dockyard, Len Chambers, used to work for him. Um, and then Skip Tatum learned from him. And it, it, so it came from, uh, from Jay in Bermuda, is where my roots came from. And uh, then John Harries uh, and Skip Tatum had, a, had this company before I took it over in 1980. Uh, and John was uh, actually instrumental in taking us into an analytical design stage and then into computers. So uh, today, I mean, I'm probably the last real sailmaker in Bermuda. When I moved it here, you know, primarily became a service loft as opposed to um, making new sails. We haven't made new sails really on a, on a production scale since 1985 so um, just because we couldn't compete in the world arena so what we do is service them but one of the beauties about servicing is that we meet hundreds and hundreds of people every year and some very interesting people uh, wealthy people poor people but just travelers everybody's got stories to tell uh, it's an exciting world it's a small world and it's almost like a family, you know, the sailing world is, is a family. I wouldn't want to do anything else, you know, I wouldn't, I've always done it, so I don't really know. I certainly couldn't see myself in a coat and tie, working in an office, pushing a pencil and, you know, wearing my Bermuda shorts and knee socks. I don't like to wear shoes at the best of times, but, uh, Anyway, so the passion is there because it's an enjoyable lifestyle. Every day is a learning day. I don't think there's a lot of businesses that can say that, but uh, I usually every day learn something different and new, and uh, whether it's related directly to sail making, um, and certainly the other side of it where we do custom awnings, we're doing a big project now for a boat in Germany. We've done some of the biggest schooners in the world. Uh, we've, um, we've supplied our services to some of the most uh, amazing uh, projects. And um, I, think, I think just the diversity makes it uh, a fantastic occupation. I think that, uh, yeah, as I say, I wouldn't want to do anything else. It's the only thing I'd want to do, so. One of the great things that we have in Bermuda right now is the sailing programs that are going on. And uh, it's, not a, it's not anymore for the elite, and everybody has a chance. I think the Bermuda Sloop program is awesome. The uh, junior sailing programs in the Opties are great. And I'm hoping that uh, with that, you'll, we'll encourage more people to become involved in the trades, in the marine trades, um, sail making, um, there's, there's electronics, there's all sorts of uh, great opportunities for people out there. And, uh, but it does take hard work and it takes, it's, it takes a long time to learn. I mean, I, I spent a lifetime learning and uh, certainly um, it, it does take a lifetime and it needs, to, you need to be uh, pretty switched on as far as uh, using your own initiative for a lot of things. But, uh, I would encourage 
people to actually think about the trades. Don't go after the big money. Go after the steady, great, uh, great old jobs and, and um, traditions that, uh, that we still have here. So I think it's um, definitely worth encouraging the youth of today. So the, this job is actually pretty interesting because we, uh, because of all the handwork, all the everything's got to be spliced. Everything's it's just it's got to look perfect, and it's um, and that's what uh, that's what we have a good reputation to do on the big boat side. Another reason why I like doing this type of work. It's, it's an art, you know, it's a, it's a trade and it's an art. And uh, it's actually a way of life more than, than uh, you know, you don't jump into this business to, to become wealthy. You, can, you jump into it because you want to be there.